terms of the accuracy of the data. Definitely not. But you are required to speak the correct sentences and you can only speak the correct sentences as you are confident about what you are speaking. So what happens? We will have so many hesitations. Uh, we are going, we will have so many uh, hesitations. You, know, you are not necessarily required to give them the right content in terms of the accuracy of the data. Definitely not. But you are required to speak the correct sentences and you can only speak the correct sentences as you are confident. Okay, let's get started with the class. I'm actually live on uh, YouTube. I was unable to go live on Facebook today, but uh, that's okay. All right, so are you guys able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Maybe you were able to see my screen. Um, so uh, uh, I was trying to go live on Facebook, but I wasn't. So I have put this live class on uh, YouTube, our YouTube channel. Remember, we have a YouTube channel with the same name, Endeavor PTE Study Center. Study Center. So please feel free to subscribe to that channel and I'm going to uh, do some live videos on YouTube as well. Let's get started with today's class. So today's class is about essay writing and PTE um, writing module, essay writing class. Now, before um, we go to, um, uh, we, before we go ahead uh, in this class, I would like to ask, uh, um, you know, all of you um, to, um, you know, like our Facebook page and like our um, YouTube page, um, YouTube, uh, um, channel uh, Endeavor PT Study Center so that you don't uh, miss a potential um, uh, potential classes or free live classes which are coming in future. Uh, obviously, we have worked, um, we have helped uh, many students to achieve uh, desires us, and we don't believe in any shortcut. Uh, we believe in teaching uh, appropriate academic English. Uh, we know that as long as you improve your English, uh, you will pass your PT with your desired result. Uh, for some people, it may take longer than others because everyone is at different level in terms of learning, but we don't believe in any shortcuts or any, any things or any of those tricks or tips and all that. Yes, tips are definitely there, but there are no tricks. So if you're looking for uh, like tricking the computer and finding a strategy to trick or get around the way, no, we don't teach that. We just teach you pure plain English, academic English. So feel free to um, like our page um, and like our channel on uh, YouTube. And uh, some of you who have joined us uh, um, on, on uh, some of the students who are new students, potential students who have joined us for free for this class, you can visit our uh, portal, which is um, endeavorstudy.com.au. And after that, you can create, um, create a guest login. And then from a guest login, you will be able to access some parts of our portal to practice, to give you practice about some questions about um, PT, some of the questions. All right. So let's get to um, now, next thing, uh, I've already explained this. So um, I want everyone to be engaged. I want everyone to ask questions. So if you have any questions, you can just uh, type in the chat box or you can just directly ask me here, right? Um, unfortunately, I was unable to go live on Facebook due to some hitch, uh, but I'm live on uh, YouTube. Um, we do not have a huge following on YouTube, but obviously, um, you know, when we upload some more videos, uh, uh, you guys will be able to take benefit out of this, right? So next is the, uh, so in PTE, uh, basically you, in a writing module, you have uh, two question types. We have summarized written text um, and uh, we have write essay. So the number of questions in the exam may vary uh, from two to three in a summarized written text, but sometimes they can even give you one summarized written text. So anything between one and three summarized written text is fine in PT. So in summarized written text, you're required to write a single sentence summary. So I'm going to mute you all so that we have less noise. Uh, see, and then if you have any questions, please do ask questions. Um, I'm going to mute you all, okay? Ask questions by unmuting yourself, okay? So get back to the class, all right. So summarize the written text. You are required to write a summary between five to 75 words in 10 minutes, one summary in 10 minutes. So if you get three, you get 30 minutes, 10 minutes each. Um, in that question type, basically uh, they give you a prompt of up to 300 words. You have to read it quickly and you have to extract three to four main points and you have to write them back in a summary in single sentence. So we will cover that topic sometimes later. Second question type in writing, uh, in PT writing is essay writing. So essay writing, you can sometimes get one or sometimes you get two. 
So sometimes they mix and match. They give you one summarized written text, but they give you two essays. Sometimes they give you two summarized written texts, and they give you one essay. One of our students uh, yesterday, he was in class. Uh, uh, yesterday, he was um, in class to share his experience. I mean, um, he achieved 87 overall. He got two summaries and he got one essay. And he was lucky enough to have both summaries from our people. Um, so obviously, uh, repeat exam questions. We don't sell this idea, repeat exam questions. We, we want to prepare you for every question type, every question Pearson can throw at you. Yes, there are certain questions which are repeated. We have uh, all of those questions in our portal, whatever has been repeating lately. So, but we, I don't sell that idea that we have all the exam questions, no. Um, now in write essay, you're required to write essay in 20 minutes and between 200 to 300 words. My ideal word limit is somewhere close to 250. Any essay containing 250 words, if it is proofread, if it's flawless, is good enough for your um, maximum marks. Now, the most important thing to understand here in PTE is that uh, most of us, we have done IELTS before and we are scared from the IELTS essays just because of the reason that we don't understand um, how IELTS essays are scored because the scoring criteria is not quite defined. Most people struggle in IELTS uh, essay writing. Now, there are many reasons why people struggle. The first and more foremost reason is that we don't know how to write essay. Okay, number one. Secondly, um, uh, the scoring criteria is not quite defined. So you can't figure out what you need to provide in terms of your essay to be scored seven plus or eight plus. My IELTS writing score was, uh, um, I'm going to put you guys on mute for a sec. Probably someone is trying to contact me. So my IELTS essay, um, uh, my IELTS writing score was eight and I know how I have brought that. Um, but um, having said that, uh, it is uh, for average student, it is difficult to get seven plus bands in IELTS, right? But here, what Pearson has done, they have reduced the writing um, uh, question types only, writing question types only to, um, to very uh, less score. So for example, out of, 20, out of 90 score in writing, only 25 to 27 marks will come from writing module, right? So almost one third, even less than one third. And then, then most of the writing marks, most of the writing marks will come from mainly your listening module. So summarize spoken text, fill in the blanks and write from dictation, okay? And when we talk about uh, reading and writing, fill in the blanks, reading and writing, fill in the blanks, you have approximately 20 to 25 points coming from reading and writing, fill in the blanks from the reading module. So if you fail in writing, actually writing module is not the culprit. The culprit is listening module because you have 45 approximately marks coming from your listening module towards your writing. Do we all understand that or not? Please yeah. unmute your phones and ask. Yes. Right, just give me one moment because I just have to, uh, wait, uh, I have to just uh, wait here. Um, I have to post this that I was unable to go live. And then we are, Just give me one moment. Let me post it. Just give me one moment, let me post this and then we'll be, I'll, we'll start that because there are a few people who are waiting for Facebook Live.
All right, here we go. So I posted there, so hopefully the people will come. Um, All right, so sorry for uh, delay guys. So basically where we were, we were at listening module. So in listening, you have potential contribution coming uh, towards the writing from your listening module. Now, any question from here? No. Right, that's good. Let's go to the next screen. So next screen, this is how the screen looks like. How does the screen not looks like? I would say look like network agreement. So here um, you will say, you see cut, copy, paste button. And obviously you have a word count here. And then uh, here it shows one of one. So that means in this, um, you have one question, you're attempting that question and you have total 20 minutes. That's your screen looks like. Now, next is about the scoring criteria. Very, very important to understand that how everything is scored, right? How in PT, everything is quite defined, the scoring criteria. So as a, a teacher, it helps us to identify that what would be a better response, what would be a good response, right? So scoring criteria is quite defined. Now this scoring criteria is defined. Um, we have a few uh, resources. Uh, there is one PT teacher's notes. So we have a resource we, we, we known as PT teacher's notes. If we just Google it, you can find that PDF document containing like 200 words or, or words, right? That's Pearson's authentic material where they have explained each item type with its scoring. But I have, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, made this slide reading everything what was available there. So in essay, they give you three marks for the content. So three marks for the content to cover the content well, make sure that you understand the essay topic and try to cover essay topic on both uh, both sides, positive and negative side in most cases, right? Try to write down somewhere close to 250 words um, to cover the content well. Obviously, if you write the lower limit, suppose if you only write 200 words, you may not be able to cover all the content. But if you write uh, more than, um, if you write somewhere close to 250 words, that should be good enough for us uh, for you to uh, get good marks in the content so that you are able to, uh, you will be able to cover the um, essay uh, content well, if you write somewhere close to 250 words. Now form, form means you have to write your essay between 200 to 300 words for maximum two marks in form. Also, you have to write essay on the topic. You cannot write essay completely off the topic. So off the topic essay means that suppose they were, the essay was about global warming and you have um, written an essay about cricket. I know that we, we, none of us uh, has that bad level of English. Most of us are able to understand what the topic is, right? So, but make sure that uh, you get, uh, you write minimum 200 and not more than 300. So not 301, not 199. So you will get one mark in the form if you write between 130 to 199 words. If you write, you'll get it. If you write between 300 to, I think uh, more than 300 words for 50 words, then you get, uh, one mark there for form. But if you get two to 300 words and on the topic, then you get two marks for form. So form is like your, uh, if you don't get, if you don't get anything in form, so that means nothing will be scored. You will straight away get zero for your essay. If you don't get anything in form. So make sure we stay between 200 to 300 words. Then general linguistic range means ability to express your ideas clearly and unambiguously. So clear thesis statement, um, if you write with the template, you can get, grab all those general linguistic range marks. Now, structure, development, and coherence, very important. So that means your essay should be paragraphed. Paragraphs should be well managed. Within the paragraph, you should have definite topic sentence, example sentence, two of uh, discussion sentences, and concluding sentence, right? Make sure you have used the connectors properly, appropriately, so that uh, your writing, uh, uh, your written work, uh, uh, is connected with each other. Every paragraph is connected to each other. Every sentence is connected to each other. So it's a one piece of writing. It's not like you're writing something else in one place. It's not like casual writing. Like it's not like casual talking. For example, you you meet one of your old friends and uh, you just start with a slap. Where have you been for so long, right? So academic means you have to uh, use all the basics of academic writing. So you have to introduce the topic then you have to divide information into the paragraphs and paragraphs 
uh, should also be divided into different sentences with meaningful sentences, right? Then we have grammar, two marks for grammar, mainly subject verb agreement and uh, run on sentences. So if you have defective sentence structure, that means you're going to lose those grammar marks. One mistake, you will lose one mark. For two mistakes, you will lose two marks. Vocabulary, appropriate word choice, simply means appropriate word choice. Nothing, uh, nothing like you have to uh, drag a word into your writing. I mean, I have seen uh, some of the students doing the same thing in Nile, that you know the word and you want to somehow want to drag it into your essay. But as a um, uh, you know, native speaker, most of our teachers are native speakers who check our essays and things, especially in Isles. Um, uh, they, they know that uh, that word does not belong to that place. So it does not collocate with the surrounding words. So word choice is uh, defective if you don't use appropriate vocabulary. Then we are talking about spelling. Uh, spelling, try to use only one spelling convention consistently, either UK or US. Okay, avoid extra spaces in typing errors, avoid using backspace key. I mean, this won't affect your score. This won't affect mm -hmm. your score a lot. It won't affect your main skill, but it, you, it may give you bad score in your, uh, it may give you bad score in the spelling. You know, one of the criteria is spelling. So it may give you bad score in that, that column, but it won't affect your main, main score. Now the contribution coming from, although there are 15 marks in essay, but the contribution coming from uh, from this, uh, from essay towards a writing 90 score is approximately 12 to 13, right? Um, you know, not even 13 to 15, I would say anything between 12 to 13. I'll just correct there. Uh, look, that, that figure, you know, varies depending on how many other questions you have got in, in that particular exam. Okay, now I want to ask, is there any question um, until here? Any question? Please unmute yourself and ask your question before we move next. No, sir. Like if we delete any word by pressing backspace, so it increases our spelling. It decreases our spelling marks. It would. It it can affect your. This is my observation. It can affect your. Uh, um, it can affect your. Uh, um, uh, yes, you're right. But it won't affect your main score. You it won't affect your main skills score. It will affect your sub skill, which is one of the sub skill. Like you have six sub skills, it can affect there, but it won't affect your main score at all. So what we can do? Just select and then delete that thing. Don't press backspace. Doesn't really matter what you do there. Don't pay attention to this. That uh, so just ignore that. But I have put there because this is my observation. If you uh, uh, press backspace key, you will get bad score in spelling, but it won't affect your main score at all. So you do not need to worry about that thing at all. Okay. Right? Unfortunately, what I have observed in PT, people spend, students spend more time on knowing the irrelevant things. So yeah. this is also one of the irrelevant things. Yeah. So you should not be spending time in knowing whether it affects, but this point is there as a, uh, it is my duty for you, uh, it is my duty to tell you guys that yes, it may affect your score, but it won't have impact on your score where you need that each part. So you need 65 each or 79 each, it won't have impact there at all. Okay. Good. Right. Apart from this, is there any all other? Good. Okay. No, let's, move on. let's move on. Um, let's move on. Let's move on. I'm also at the same time. I'm also looking at Facebook page because there are people who are having trouble. They were, you know, watching me on Facebook. But that's fine. All those guys who are watching me um, here, if you have someone waiting for um, our live telecast on um, Facebook um, page, um, please make sure that uh, um, you attend it on YouTube, and that video will be available on YouTube. All right, so let's uh, keep going with this. Now, next one is, uh, okay, some of the spelling errors or spelling uh, differences between UK and US spelling convention. Now, in PT, Pearson have clearly indicated that you have to use one spelling convention consistently throughout uh, any given task. So they say any given task, what I would say throughout PT. If you stick to one spelling convention, uh, then you're going to have less spelling errors. So UK spelling convention you can use, or you can use a um, US spelling convention, whichever. So these are the common differences in spelling 
between the UK and the US spelling convention. For example, summarize. So all that I Z E that is more UK um, US spelling convention. And then if you say summarize R I S E that is UK spelling convention. Similarly with civilized. And there's another difference is on, uh, spelling for color and uh, um, uh, color um, and honor. So there's O U R um, that's UK spelling convention, but C O L O R H O N O R is also good. That's a US spelling convention. So make sure you use one spelling convention consistently. I generally recommend the UK spelling convention because most of our students, they come from India or Indian subcontinent. And we, um, you know, mostly use their UK spelling convention, but we also have students from Philippines. We also have students from uh, Middle East. So uh, I ask them to stick to the spelling convention they used in the original country so that you are less likely to do spelling errors. Okay, G uh, Gagan, were you aware of that before? No. Yeah, so that's a big fact. You must learn this. This is important to learn. Okay, okay so stick to spelling, one spelling convention consistently throughout your PTE. Okay, now basically time management is the key in uh, PTE uh, because if you don't manage time, you can't finish essay. 20 minutes mm -hmm. are no time. It's, it's just not a good enough time to uh, give them a finished, well-finished essay. But good thing is if you write the essay with template, you can finish within 20 minutes with proofreading. This is the reason some of our students have scored 90. Why they have scored 90? Because they were able to proofread their essay. In the exam, if you think and if you write, then that means you won't be able to finish the same time. So make sure that you don't do, the, uh, you don't do thinking and writing together. You should already know what you would be writing. And that's why you need to learn the template. A template which makes sense as well to anyone. So make sure um, you know uh, there is 20 minutes time, which is screen free. So, so two to three minutes of reading and identifying the uh, key phrases from the topic. So read the topic, apply your at least one or two minutes or two to three minutes in reading the topic properly. So you can extract noun phrase one and noun phrase two, which is known as topic part one and topic part two. So noun phrase one or topic part one is the main phrase or main keyword. And then your topic part two is what that keyword is affecting if we change that keyword. So mostly essay topics are uh, generalized. They talk about the general things. They don't want to give you anything in which you do not have anything to write because it's not a knowledge-based exam. It is exam of your writing. It's exam of your English. Um, and then the person who is reading your essay can just by reading it can um, find out what, what was the topic and what you have written because you have, they, they know the basics of writing that it should have paragraphs, paragraphs should be divided into sentences, sentences should be well-written, compound complex and things like that. So um, you must know that um, what your topic phrase one and topic phrase two or topic part one or topic part two is. I'm going to explain that what are topic part one and topic part two in coming few slides. Now, 10 to 12 minutes in writing, 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 and then you should have at least four to five minutes or maximum six minutes for your proofreading. Because if you don't proofread your essay, that means your essay is going to have two spelling errors. So two spelling out, two grammar errors, two grammar out. Now your essay, which out of 15 has already come down to 11 before someone has even started scoring it. Now, after that 11, if you get eight, that is the score of, that is a level of 55 or 60. So if you want to get maximum from this essay, then if you want to score all those points from essay, then you need to get maximum from, uh, from uh, you, you need to proofread your essay basically. So if you don't proofread your essay, you can't get maximum marks. So you have to have a finished product within 20 minutes. And that can only happen if you already know what you would be writing. Okay. Now let's quickly have a look at the essay, different topics, different types of essays. I have broadly categorized them in three categories. Um, now, this, this, the, the categorization of essay topics in different categories, that's individualistic approach. If you go to some another tutor, he may have his own understanding. But this is my own understanding. Having written essay uh, eight plus in IELTS, um, if eight bands uh, in IELTS, having helped many people lifting their score from six to 6.5 to 7.5 and eight in writing in IELTS, as well as having helped the people who come from typical Hindi background, uh, lifting their score from 55 to writing to 890 in writing, I have come up with this slide that broadly classified 
I'll classify any essay topic into these three categories. Out of them, 99 or 95% of the essay topics, they fall in the first two categories. And out of that 95 or 99%, you have 85% falling in the first category. So most of the essay topics, far now we have all the latest essay topics, 50, 55, which are, which are being asked in PT, they fall in that category, what, we, what is known as argumentative question or opinion-based type, okay? Any topic in which they are asking question, give your, uh, give your what, is, what do you think? Or what is your opinion? So in those essay topics, I want everyone to cover both sides. Let's have a look at example first one. Uh, students' academic performance is tested with the help of written examinations. Is this a good idea? Give relevant examples to support your viewpoint. So here, main noun phrase is about written examinations. So, so there are so many other words. Academic performance is a word. Good idea is a word. Relevant is a word. Viewpoint is a word. But these are not the right words. The main word here is written examinations. So should uh, essays... Should people be tested with the help of written examinations or not? Um, so basically that's one of the essay um, topic which is uh, being asked lately. Now you have second topic, a lot of information is available online these days. Do we really need libraries then? That's another essay topic uh, which is being asked. Uh, give relevant examples to support your viewpoint, uh, to, to prove your viewpoint. Then you have another category. So wherever you, they have asked your viewpoint or they have asked a question from me, I would recommend everyone to I would recommend everyone to uh, discuss both sides, so positive and negative as well, so that you can cover the topic both sides if that's a topic allows. But there would be certain essay topics in which they will ask only advantages or disadvantages. For example, discuss the advantages of online information if someone asks like that. In that case, you can't discuss disadvantage, right? Obviously. So in that case, you should be only writing advantages, right? In that case, we have to tweak the topic tweak the essay template to, to, to some extent to fit into the topic. Now, there's another category, a uh, descriptive type. Um, I mean, look, it's not a knowledge-based exam, so they're not necessarily required to ask you opinion-based or advantage, disadvantage type. They can even ask you descriptive type of essays. So descriptive, for example, uh, describe a person in your life who has influenced you the lot or who has influenced you a lot. So means your role model. So even if you are writing an essay about your role model, obviously that's not the essay which is argumentative type. So you can't use more or less the same vocabulary, vocabulary as you're using for your argumentative or advantage and disadvantage essay types, but you can definitely use those, the same basic structure of the essay so that you are, your information is divided into paragraphs. So you have introduction paragraph, then you have body paragraph one, you have body paragraph two, and then you have conclusion paragraph. We can discuss this towards the end of the, session now what i want everyone to like because this is the uh, you know i have you have joined me because you want to score a, a good score in writing and for writing uh, for scoring having a good score in writing you need good tools okay so this is one of the good tool uh, which is a template so this is our introduction paragraph i want everyone to make notes in your notebooks please whole slide all the slide whatever you see in this slide Can you all hear me? Yes. 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 So please make note of the whole slide. Yeah. Uh, we have some other people. We have Lena, we have Zach. Zach, have you done the essay class before? Um, I don't remember. I don't think we do. I did uh, yeah. we okay. rather so here, did. but so one more is did. better. Yeah, that's fine. So that's fine. You, you do it again, okay? You do it again. Yeah. So okay. um, any of those, Lena, you have done it before. If you know your essay, yes. Uh, uh, you know, if you know your template, then I would um, actually have you to write an essay uh, during okay. this time. Try to put 20 minutes and pick any topic and write essay. See, what do you do in 20 minutes? Okay, sir. Okay? Yeah. Because I know that you know most of that part. And we have, yeah. Zach, we have, I think most of other people haven't attended. Uh, uh, Mika, have you attended this class before? Uh, this is only my second time. Yeah, that's fine. So you can stay in here if you're just yeah. planning this. Yep, that's good. Let's everyone quickly please make notes. I'm going to, I'm giving you like three to four minutes to um, uh, make notes on this slide. Thank you. We can take a screenshot. Like. No, not screenshot. If you really want improvement, I want you to write it with uh, mm. 
notes because when you write you actually you get that in your head too sir what we have to write whole screen can you see my screen yeah yeah whole screen oh, okay so you want me to write like introduction paragraph right yeah, those words this is the introduction paragraph and this is actually the template and then i'm going to explain so write the whole template in your notebook okay notebook okay yeah in your notebook please hi sabia Susan, I just want to ask you, uh, have you sent me a request to join our closed Facebook group? Susan? Susan, can you hear me? Let me know if you guys are done and then we can discuss this.
Sir, done. Yep, so Rubal, you are done. Lucia, are you done? Mika? Done. Yes, and done. Yep. Almost. Yep, that's good. Let's finish um, it off. I'll give you one more minute. Yep. I haven't seen on the screen, but I'm not sure. You haven't seen what? On your screen, I write by myself. So what did you, what was your question, Rubal? Can you please see? No, no, I just, I'm just telling you that I haven't saw on your screen. I just wrote because I learned the template. Oh, okay, okay. You haven't seen this. Uh, you didn't see the screen. You try to write it from your memory from previous. That's good. Yeah. That is pretty good, dear. That is good. Thank you. Mm. Okay, so let's uh, if you have finished. So Mika, once you're done, please let me know. I'm waiting for the last few people to finish. That's good. Yeah, I'm done writing this. Um, yeah, so and then do, are you done as well? Chandan, are you done as well? All right, so we have few people. Let me check. Um, yep, that's all right. Yep. Yogesh? Yogesh, can you hear me? Yes, I already. Yeah. Are you done? Yes. Okay. So let's look at, um, let's discuss, uh, uh, say, for example, we discussed this topic right here. Let me change, uh, let me go to previous slide. Yep, done. So let's take this a student's academic performance is tested with the help of uh, blah, blah, blah. Is it a good idea or not, right? So here, if we extract a written examination as my first part, and then second part is not quite clear here. So you can just, if we, if we change in written examination, we can change, um, you know, it can change potentially, um, you know, education system. So. Uh, we are going to discuss if you change uh, the, you know, the way examinations are conducted or the way students are graded, it can change uh, potentially the education outcome or it can change the um, uh, outcome of uh, students' uh, performance, right? So basically, if I take that as a noun phrase, so the topic will become the importance of uh, online, uh, the importance of uh, uh, the phrase here is, um, uh, written examinations. So importance of written examinations, comma, which was always debatable, comma, has become more controversial. In the recent years, the substantial influence of written examinations has sparked controversy over the potential impact of this trend on education system or students' academic outcomes. Uh, intrinsically, while some people have positive views, comma, others have negative opinion. This sentence uh, talks about everyone else's views there before you speak your own view which is a thesis statement, that is the next sentence. It can be agreed that while written examinations plays an important role in education system, or you can say while written examinations, um, uh, uh, while written examination uh, is important for education system or in education system, comma, it has certain drawbacks. So either you say plays an important role or you say are important or is important. It has certain drawbacks. This essay will discuss both sides of the argument and lead to a logical conclusion, right? So this essay will discuss both sides of the argument and lead, lead to a logical conclusion. So basically uh, we have to fix the template. Once the template is fixed, you have ideally four, five sentences in the most essay topics you're going to use it. Um, ideally, once the essay, um, you know, once the template is fixed, uh, um, it will, if you already know it, you'll be done in like three or four minutes in the exam, just by finishing your introduction. So that you are able to finish your essay within 15 minutes. And then you are able to finish the essay within 15 minutes so that you have at least four to five minutes to proofread. 
because it is the proof reading where you're going to save points, right? Now, but the problem here is that with, uh, to fit this essay in every topic, you have to tweak it according to the needs as per the needs, okay? So for example, if you have an essay topic in which they have only discussed or they have only asked, for example, if the topic was discuss the advantages of online information. So in that topic or discuss the advantages of online, uh, discuss the advantages of online information or discuss the advantages of written examinations. In, the, the, in that case, in those uh, kind of topics, uh, it does not allow you, they do not allow you to discuss both parts. You discuss both sides only when the essay topic allows you. In that case, the essay topic won't allow you. So that's why you have to change certain parts of your introduction to make it work. So for example, the thesis statement, uh, which is your fourth sentence, which is highlighted in blue color, um, should be changed. So in that case, uh, you cannot write, uh, it has certain drawbacks. You just have to write, online information has, or it can be agreed that online information has many advantages, right? Or uh, written examinations have many advantages. You cannot write, uh, it has certain drawbacks. So you have to change that mainly. You also have to change the third sentence. So you can completely remove that sentence because you're not discussing other side. So we are not discussing, uh, we are not making reference to other side, what other people think, right? And you also have to change your last sentence. So because last sentence also makes reference to this essay will discuss both sides of the argument and lead to a logical conclusion. This essay, this sentence can also be changed to a simplified version. For example, this essay will elaborate this topic in detail or this essay will discuss the advantages of online information. Does that make sense? This is where most of the people uh, get confused and I want you to ask questions wherever you like. So remember in PTE, you are not graded like IELTS essays, number one, this is my um, observation. As long as whatever you have written makes sense to you, it makes sense to computer. But computer will not go and think and uh, would, would not uh, sort, of, um, um, sort of anticipate that what you should be writing. So your work is graded oh. as it is, on the basis of what you have written, not on the basis of what you could have, what, what you could have written. Okay, so please ask questions if you have any, and then we will move on to the next slide. I have a question. So this um, template morally on the argumentative type of essay, yeah, and with uh, some changes uh, with advantage or advantage only topic uh, types. As well. Yeah. So for for example, if the essay if the essay is a descriptive type, that's the time we're going to change the. That's the right. Story. Yeah. You have to do uh, uh, you have to change it to make it work. That's right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, I have a question. Hello. Yeah. Please ask. Sir, if the topic is uh, asking about describe advantages and disadvantages of this position or the topic, in that so case, will... as well, you are going to use the same template because anyhow, you are going to, for any argumentative type of essay, you're going to talk about both sides. So in that case, if, if, you, if, if they are asking you, discuss the advantages and disadvantages of a written examinations. So that is as good as discussing any essay topic, like uh, any argumentative, like viewpoint essay type. Okay, sir. Right? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, both cases, more or less, you will do the same thing. Yes. You know, more or less, you will do the same thing. Just um, uh, slight changes. Mika? Yep. Got it. Thanks. All right. So, should we go to next slide? Yes, please. Yeah. Here we go. So next slide is this. So I have written uh, your uh, uh, one full um, essay, one full introduction paragraph with that topic. Okay, so the importance of online information, which was always debatable, has become more controversial. In recent years, the substantial influence of online information has sparked a controversy over the potential impacts of this trend on the existence of libraries. Uh, intriguingly, while some people have positive views, some others have negative opinions. It can be agreed that while online information plays a significant role in day-to-day -day life, it has certain drawbacks. This essay will discuss both sides of the argument and lead to a logical conclusion. 
okay so this is how um, we have fit the topic now we will talk about essay body paragraph two or we also call it body paragraph one so it is essay paragraph two and body paragraph one so it should have ideally 80 to 90 words and that is the template i want everyone to make notes of this as well thank you Let me know if you guys are done and then we'll move on to the next slide. Yes, sir, done. You have done it before too, so that's why you're done. Done. <laughs> then, that's good. Who else? Lucia? Yeah. Are you done? Yeah. Who else is there? Uh, Manoj, are you done? Gagan? Actually, Gagan, you uh, went yes. out and then you came back in again? Yes, so, because yeah. I'm working so like... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So you probably uh, will not be able to connect it much, but uh, that's okay as long as, uh, um, you know, uh, you, you get some parts of it. No. Yes. Are you guys done? All right, let's move. So basically quite self-explanatory. So if you say at the outset, uh, there are numerous reasons to prove that online information plays a significant role in day-to-day -day life, comma, but the most important one is rooted in the fact that that's where your main sentence will come in, main sentence, main supporting point. Full stop, for example, then you will extend that into an example. So give example, and then you can write another sentence with moreover. Uh, but most people will struggle to fit as many as ideas here, but you are not required to write 
more than three sentences here in total. So one sentence topic, main sentence, and then for example, sentence, and probably one sentence in between, either you write more over one, or you write recent research in this area one, and then you write last sentence thus, and conclude. So clear organization of sentences within paragraph, topic sentence, example sentence, two discussion sentences, and a conclusion sentence. This is the basic, these are the basics of a good paragraph. Topic sentence. So these are also the tips for writing summarized written text back. So whenever you're looking at a summarized written text, you need to identify main points from the topic sentences of each paragraph. And those are the sentences you will pick. Most times you can pick um, sentences from the topic sentences of each paragraph, or you can club and make one sentence out of the topic sentence and including sentence from the paragraphs, then you read. Good? Uh, excuse me. Yep. Is this template for um, which, which kind of essay? Like, is it? So who is that? Ivy. Ivy, Ivy. You were there in morning class too, were you? No. Okay, Ivy. So this essay template is for uh, any essay topics in which uh, they have asked your viewpoint. So if they have asked your viewpoint or if you have asked what is your opinion, so your opinion has to be both ways, positive as well as negative. Mm, okay. And advantage and disadvantage as well. Mm. Right? So both kind of, these are the most, uh, most types of essays fall in this category. Okay? Yes. Any question here on this screen? Can you please clarify again the more over? It's just only an additional. Basically, this sentence is here. If you want to add another side point, simulating to the main point, you can start with more over. But you are necessarily not required to add this sentence at all. You can just start from here. So you have the one sentence here, one with example sentence, and one sentence here, and then you conclude the sentence. OK. OK. All right. Should we move to the next slide? Yes. Yep. Yes. Rubel, should we move to the next slide? Susan? Yes, sir. Yes. Susan, you are also here. Susan, are you here? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I am. That's good. All right. Here we go. Next slide. Very busy slide. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to... Um, Induce the slide and let me uh, take this thing out. Otherwise, some people just get confused with that. All right. So I want everyone to make notes of this whole slide. Unfortunately, it's a long slide, but um, it's not rocket science. It's quite simple to understand. So make notes of that. I'll give you two or three minutes and then we'll discuss that. Someone has sent me some messages. So let me check um, in chat. Uh, okay. It's Kuldeep. Yeah, Kuldeep. So uh, the only uh, issue was there gained. So G A I N E D. Not gain, gained. But I'm going to place a class, special class for just proofreading, your summaries, your essays, and things like that. So we will do proofreading together for everyone's work.
All right. I hope you going. Uh, you guys are going well. Ask um, meaning of the words. If you have any issues, I want everyone to understand the meaning of those words as well. So if you have any question regarding the meaning of the words or anything, we can discuss right here. But I'll give you, um, you know, time to ask questions towards the end of the session as well. We are almost done. So we have these two paragraphs to understand and then we have uh, the concluding part to uh, discuss. Sir, I have done this one, but uh, can you please explain when everyone finish the uh, like the another positive side? Yeah, yeah, we definitely. Because can. I didn't understand. That's okay. That's all right. I'll explain. I know uh, too much uh, in PTE. Too much. Uh, remember, lose this exam is important, and I want everyone to pass. I want all of you to pass with more than your desired result. That will boost up your confidence and that will be good for you for your future in Australia. If you want to live and work in um, an English speaking nation, English is something we need to work on, whether it is spoken or it is uh, written. So um, yes, we. I believe that um, if you do the right thing, if you, run every, if you learn everything from the basics, um, obviously you're going to uh, be successful, especially when you're looking for 65 and 79 plus score. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, just I was just doing one essay, and um, uh, I've got around two hundred and thirteen words. Is that okay? Two hundred and thirteen. One three. Two thirteen. I mean, it's okay. I mean, I had a student. He yeah. only wrote two hundred nineteen words in the essay, and his writing score was eighty five. Okay. So as long as it makes sense, uh, there is a chance that you may not get full marks in the content. Uh, you may yeah. only do, but as long as you get 
doing the content and if everything is correct you will get 14 out of 15 more than that okay enough. okay all right uh, so usually it, the expectation is around 300 words no uh, expectation is anything between 200 to 300 but i would okay. i would say uh, if you have to cover the topic well somewhere close to 240 250 mark will be okay. good okay all right okay yeah. yeah all right thank you sir yeah so um lena um i would uh, um, recommend you that because uh, you are progressing well throughout the course um you seem to be confident i believe that uh, you don't need to wait for like two or three months to do uh, your exam so yeah as we yeah, have uh, already i've actually booked for july i just wanted to give time to just uh, because i am not actually getting it's only time when i do the class with you that i'm doing but after that i'm so busy with um placement and assignments and all so i'm actually free in my month of june mm -hmm. after um, because i have a one month uh, break before my next semester so i thought i can really concentrate on studying at home properly oh. with english yeah yeah that's fine yeah so just wanted to be really uh, prepared yeah yeah that's good i mean i have yeah. no problems with that if you want to take yeah. long but um i try to identify people's strengths and weaknesses and yeah. then probably Uh, i won't um you know have anyone to sort of uh, prepare for long and then yeah. you cook it and then right, yeah. then you go and do it you have taken a lot of stress on you because you have uh, you <laughs> yes, can take like yeah. three months for prepare it so you take a lot of stress no i mean there are people who have done in three four weeks and i would put yes. it in that category yeah so yeah. that's why i was pushing you a little yeah. bit early but um yeah. but i can still uh, use that link to do the mock test the one you said yes, can yeah so they see that where you stand at the moment yes yeah. yes right okay yeah all right let's discuss this uh, uh, guys it's been um, uh, you know th this slide is very busy um because there is a lot of information there so let's talk about so in ideal scenario where you are discussing one positive and one negative so you are going to use the body paragraph to the one which is written on the top so negative side so nevertheless um you, you know better words better marks english is all about vocabulary the better vocabulary you use the better words um, you have so never nevertheless simply means however so better words better marks nevertheless or nonetheless you know um these words are really uh, argumentative and they really mean more than just however there means some drawbacks of online information which can influence the people life or which can influence the society come but the most alarming one stems from the fact that that's where you write your first main point the negative side and as everything is same then you say for example write another sentence example sentence and then obviously one discussion sentence either with moreover or recent research and then you just conclude it with uh, last sentence with the so hence simple organization of sentences as simple as you saw in the previous uh, previous uh, paragraph it is just slightly different words because we are talking of negative side then in uh, the cases where you are only discussing positive uh, for example if there's a topic was only discussed the advantages of x y z whatever your noun phrase was um, then in that case uh, you can start with the a sentence beginning like this another key justification for upholding this notion that topic part 1 is important in topic part 2 is that then you can connect another sentence right feel free to tweak that sentence a little bit to fit in what you want to say there is no uh, hard and fast rule that you have to necessarily write this feel free to tweak it a little bit to fit in you know depending on what you want to say okay for example and then again example sentence moreover um, or uh, according to this and research that's another sentence and then uh, you will conclude this with the, um, you know this uh, as well so what we have seen here is every topic sentence every paragraph begins with a topic sentence and it has its concluding sentence within that paragraph so if you look at a, as a whole picture every paragraph has a topic sentence and uh, it has a concluding sentence so actually a paragraph is like a uh, like an uh, like an essay in essay what happens you have four paragraphs you have introduction body paragraph one body paragraph two and then conclusion 
But if you take the miniature segment of the full essay, uh, it will become a paragraph. So in within one paragraph, you have topics, a topic sentence, you have example sentence, two discussion sentences and sentences and concluding sentence. So no matter whether the piece of writing is this or that or that big, the basics are same. And within one sentence, you have different phrases. So you have subject phrase, you have object phrase, you have this phrase, you have that phrase, right? So this is all, these are all basics of academic writing. So you, whenever you start, you start general, you start broad, and as you clo come close to the end, uh, that's where your, um, uh, you know, most specific thing exists. So in conclusion, basically, you're going to narrow down everything in the last slide, in the concluding slide, or in the concluding uh, paragraph. Actually, it's not a paragraph, even if you write just one sentence in the conclusion, um, it's more than enough. Now we will discuss. Uh, now let's discuss the questions you had. Yes, Rugal, now ask, please. No, sir, I know got it. Like, because I didn't understand, like, what is this topic part one is important in topic part two? This is uh, my confusion. Oh, this was your confusion. So it has to come from the topic. Just see what you are talking. And then according to that, choose those words. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, so it's mainly what was the topic, original topic, that noun phrase, original noun phrase. Okay. Any other question, Mika? Not at the moment. So I'm just I'm reading about on the another passive side on the paragraph two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yogesh. No. Yogesh. Yes. <clears throat> Is it making sense to you? Yes. Yes, it does make sense. Yeah, as you mentioned that uh, we either use. Uh, one of these par second paragraph according to the uh, topic sentence, uh, according to the essay questions. But, yes. but so, Yogesh, uh, you know, let's talk about this. Your speaking score, so you say according. So, uh, according. Yep, according, yep. According. So, yep. just you have to drag that a little bit further. So, for yep. right pronunciation. Yep. Because mm -hmm. what happens if you, in your read aloud, if your words mm -hmm. are not recorded, if your pronunciation is not up to the mark, there's likely possibility that you it will affect your reading score because oh, that okay. word will be registered as a different word mm -hmm. instead of um, uh, according. Mm -hmm. so because there is double C. So if you say according, it, it doesn't reflect that uh, that double C, the according, mm -hmm. yep. according to the recent research. No, yep. Thank you. Yep. So yes, it does make uh, sense as it is for any person who uh, can understand most of the academic English. I mean, it is it it is just making um, it it just makes sense for most of it. But please do ask question if you have any doubt whatsoever. Uh, excuse me. Yes, Ivy. Um, how many essays are there in the exam? Mostly one. Oh, okay. Mostly one. Twenty minutes, one essay. All right. Any question, please? So with, the, with the body pair one, so was that related to just the, what type of the body pair was one was related to? So body paragraph one was in most essay case, uh, most essay topics, you will write body paragraph one, you are going to write positive side. Positive side, okay, yeah. Yeah, and then in body paragraph two, in most cases, you are going to write negative side in opinion based viewpoint type of essays. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. but if you have a essay in which they have only asked advantages only, in that mm -hmm. case you're going to write body part one. You're going to write positive side first, and then you're going to write another positive side. Okay, yeah. Another key justification of. Okay. Yeah. So it's based on our thes thesis and the first par um, first yeah. paragraph. Based um, on I mean, yeah. So it is based on the topics, and it is based on your approach and thesis. Yeah. That definitely. <laughs> Because what happened, if you see here, uh, in the essay topics in which you are discussing both points, in the thesis statement, you are telling them, you are saying, you're telling them that um, this essay will discuss both sides. So if you are mm -hmm. telling them here, here you are saying, it can be agreed that while blah, 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 comma, it has certain drawbacks. So this drawbacks part will go in the second body paragraph. Okay. Yeah. And then in the essay topics if, in which you are only discussing uh, advantages, then you will say it can be agreed that topic part one has many advantages. In mm -hmm. that case, you have discussed first advantage in the first paragraph in which this, 
and then you will discuss second advantage by using this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, that's, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, Susan, yes, please, your question. So just to confirm, so if there's going to be argument discussed, then we will have the introduction, a positive side, a negative side, and then a conclusion. That's it. Okay, if it's going to be just one side, like advantage or disadvantage, whichever, then we have introduction, a paragraph one, either for positive and a paragraph two, positive and then conclusion. Beautiful, that's okay. it, you got that right. one. Uh, does, it, uh, does it affect the uh, score if we only choose one side, like either positive or negative? Or, because I had the, if we use the negative side, then there's a possibility the uh, PT score high. Okay. So is very, it, uh, very good question. Let's go back to the sc uh, scoring criteria slide. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at, now this is uh, 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 the, your question. I'm going to discuss a few things when it comes down to answer mm -hmm. that question. Okay, so first thing, for content, they have only mentioned uh, that uh, you should cover the topic well. That's all they have okay. mentioned. Mm -hmm. They haven't given you anything any clue that whether you discuss only positive or whether you discuss only negative, it is going to affect your score. Mm -hmm. I would assume if I have to cover topic well, I also have to keep in mind the second part or the people who think otherwise. This is why I believe, so for, for Pearson, remember how um, computer grades your writing on the basis of a complex algorithmic program, which is known as semantic analysis. I want everyone to look into that. You just Google that term semantic analysis and then it will bring up, it's a statistic, statistical analysis of uh, written work in which uh, they can, uh, depending on what language, uh, the language at the level of sentence and at the level of the phrases within one sentence at the level of essay and at the level of a bigger piece of writing, they can determine the tentative meaning of uh, the, the, the passage you have written, semantic analysis. So here the trick is semantic analysis that does the semantic analysis grade you three in content or not? Is only game going to grade you three in the content as long as you have used most of the words which a common man will use to write about in that context, whenever that the topic comes uh, something like that, whatever they have asked. Does that answer your question? So I would assume to cover the topic well, I would assume mm -hmm. that if you write both sides, there is likely possibility that you get maximum out of this. But uh, uh, undoubtedly, even if you write one side, but if your mm -hmm. thesis statement is clear, it will not have much impact on your score at all. Oh, okay, yeah. Both Thank cases, you. it will be good. But mm -hmm. I'm just talking of the, what I think, what my understanding of uh, academic writing, uh, of uh, mm -hmm. academic writing, having eight bands in IELTS writing, having a 79 plus on uh, score in PT, this is what I have come up with. So try to discuss both sides if that's a topic allows you. If the yeah. topic does not allow you, don't discuss the negative side. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Sir, yeah. like you told, like there are uh, one another type, you know, remember the last one? Um, oh, in that type, yeah. basically you have to use your own understanding on basic concepts to write essay. They, we can't write those type of uh, essays uh, with uh, this one descriptive type. Yeah, we can't write. For example, if they ask you write uh, uh, write uh, about a person who has influenced you a lot in your life. In that case, you can't write uh, uh, you know argumentative type of template essay. Mm -hmm. So in that type of essay, I would go. I would divide my information into four paragraphs again. I'll have a definite conclusion. And I'll have introduction, I'll have two body paragraphs, but things won't go like this. You have to think from your side. Suppose mm -hmm. if I had uh, a topic like this, I will in introduction, you should generalize mm -hmm. the introduction. So I would say uh, every person in this world have one or the other role model, right? Um, uh, the role models are very, very important in life. And likewise, my father is my role model, okay? This uh, or uh, in the following paragraphs, I will describe good properties or good qualities of my father uh, for which uh, he is my role model. And then you can start the first of all, uh, I like about my father is this. So you give two or three good qualities about him, right? And then in the second, you talk about his uh, family life or you talk about his uh, uh, work life and things like that, give a couple of qualities there. And then in the end, you conclude. I wish my father, um, you know, um, a long life uh, so that uh, 
uh, we have a long-term relationship with each other, you know, things like that. Basics, look at the basics. If you get some topic like this, don't, uh, for example, if they ask you, discuss about your father. So you can't just say that uh, my role model is my father and uh, he's a doctor and uh, he's a very good man and he looks after me and done. You cannot write four sentences. You still have to extend your writing and divide your information into the paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, remember, it's not about what the topic is. It's about how you write. Yeah. So the basic of writing is you have to divide information into introduction, one chunk, another chunk, and final conclusion. So no matter what you write, you have to still divide. And whenever I'm looking at, so if you divide it in a chunk of information into a paragraph, then what are they looking at? They are going to look at the topic sentence, and they're going to see is is are your rest of the para rest of the sentences within the paragraph are talking about the topic sentence or not, or is it relevant? Mm -hmm. Right. So here there is nothing like what is right and what is wrong. There is nothing like right and wrong. Overall, how I grade your work is I look at your overall writing that are you able to connect everything well? Have you divided the information into paragraph? Is your, are your sentence, um, sentences written correctly? Do you have the subject verb agreement? Have you used complex compound sentences? Because if you use complex compound sentences, only then the relationship between different elements of what you want to say is very strong. Right, and then so writing essay is like uh, taking your friend on a journey or taking the, your reader on a journey. So in the end, once uh, the, the person has finished reading your essay, he should be left with a sense of contentment. He should not feel like this, oh, what do you want to say actually? Right, so the information should go in your, uh, in, in your reader's brain in, in just a uh, uh, you know, logical manner. And that is the quality of good writing. And if I, I'm going to read one essay for you after this, and then we'll have a look, does that make sense or not? And you'll see that how we have tweaked and how we have used the template. Okay, but very valid question. So there is nothing right, there's nothing wrong. Manoj, does that answer your question? Yogesh, sorry, not Manoj. Yogesh, does that answer your question? Yes, yes. It does actually. So there is nothing it's right, possible. there is nothing wrong. All they have is the basic. Mm -hmm. So on the base on, on that on the on the basis of uh, the scoring criteria, mm -hmm. how do you manage your work around that? That is something uh, we are looking at. Yeah. Okay. Also, also, so some topics don't have any comparison. Like you just they just give you like I saw I say now age discrimination at workplace. Uh, and they're just asking, why do you think age discrimination workplace should be made illegal and just give examples? So Yeah, so you can start something like the effects of age yeah. discrimination, which were always debatable, has become more controversial. Yeah. In recent years, the substantial influence of age discrimination has sparked a controversy over the potential impact of this trend on older age workers. Intriguingly, while some people have positive views or while some, so you can just like, rather than writing, while some people have positive views and negative views, you can just say uh, people have different opinions about age discrimination or people okay. have different opinions about uh, uh, aged workers at workplace. Okay. And can say it can be agreed that age discrimination is not a good thing uh, and it should be banned. Okay, then you can just discuss, this essay will discuss uh, the reasons why age discrimination is not a good thing and why it should be banned. Then you can start, uh, you have to tweak the topic a little bit. If you tweak mm -hmm. it, it will go well. And then mm -hmm. at the outside, there are a numerous reasons of why age discrimination should be banned at workplace. But the most important one stems from the fact that um, then you just give your explanation, right? Mm -hmm. And okay. then you can, in the second paragraph, you can just write uh, another reason for banning age discrimination from workplace is this. Then you explain that. So it can okay. affect the individual, it can affect the workplace. In the second, you can talk about it can affect the older worker within his self integrity and self belief and uh, self confidence if, if mm -hmm. he's not treated well due to his age. So, divide yeah. the information, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, in age discrimination, you cannot talk about the positive. 
Yes, that's Most what I was thinking. We're not trying like to have a discrimination. So in that case, you make it negative, negative side essay. Mm -hmm. You discuss the first bad thing about it. You discuss the okay. next bad thing about it. And in the end, you conclude. So in the end, you can conclude like this. By and large, from what has been discussed above, it can be stated that age discrimination is not helpful or age discrimination is a really bad thing for the individual as well as for the society. Therefore, it should be completely banned. Full stop. Yeah. Okay. Tweak the topic as yeah. for the needs. That is the last part. Once you master the template, mm -hmm. now in PT, there are three stages of preparation. First stage, when you learn all the question types uh, with its scoring and everything. Second, mm -hmm. and then we, you, you, you just think about, oh, why should I write something with templates? So that's it, that those questions are yes or no. Should I use template or should I use more my own imagination? Second part is when you started trusting templates that they do mm -hmm. work. So that stage will come when you are three or four weeks into the course. Okay. And when you will see someone else who has scored, who was training with you and scored 90, then he will speak, okay, templates do work, guys. Okay, like, then you start trusting them. Then third stage is mastering. When you master the template, you can tweak it as per your mm -hmm. anytime. So if you want your score, we, if you want 79 plus score, you want to be at that mastering level. Like I have done it. So what happens? I look at the topic, my templates are in my head. It's so easy for me to tweak it anytime. I have no problems. Yep. But if you're still learning it, if your template is not clear in your head, you can't tweak it. You can't go to the third step. Mm -hmm. Similar case with describe image. Similar case with the re written lecture. There's not mm -hmm. a much of the templates, more of a notes. Similar case with your other summarized spoken text. So these are three, uh, uh, they, we, we have four or five question types in which there is involvement of template. Why templates? Now something we need to understand why template. Templates are not there to stop you from writing good. They are to, to supplement your writing. Mm -hmm. But not necessarily everyone needs to use template. I had a student, he scored perfect 90 uh, in PTE writing. He was never using template because his writing was already good. He was able to create everything there and then within 20 minutes, his typing speed was very fast too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he uh, came from African background. So, but when he came to me, he was right, he was getting 75 and 76 when, but when he, uh, you know, learned about all those basics, he started, he got 90. So there has to be a reason. He must be doing something different. So what we discussed was just this, the basics of writing. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Feel free to tweak the template whenever you need it. No problems whatsoever. But when you tweak it, you should understand that you have tweaked it. You can only do that if you know all parts of it completely. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now yep. we'll come down to the last Last slide. I want everyone to make notes of this last slide, please. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. So I have sent you an email, uh, essay 15. Yep. So as I said uh, before, probably I have to put one class just for your proofreading for everyone. Yes. Proofreading. So yes, and sir. that class, I'll give everyone proofreading of the essays. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Surinder, you're not using the template here. Uh, Isn't the importance of increasing digital media available online, comma, which was always debatable. So which one? Yeah, so which one? You send me the essay, right? Yes, sir. A digital media essay. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, so you written the importance of increasing digital media available online, comma, which was always, there is no comma, which was always debatable, comma, uh, has become more controversial. Wo kaan pe gaya, step, has become more controversial. First of ke baad, your e, I is not capital. Because we, I can't proofread those like raw essays. I need clean essay for you. You can't, you have to proofread that. And you have to send me clean essay. Don't send me that raw essay. With all, so by and large, by cap, B capital and large ka L capital. How come? That's not a proper noun. Yes, Rinda? Yes, sir. But yeah, uh, just yeah, proofread your essays before sending it to me. Uh, you know that yes. I'm very, very critical with those. Uh, uh, I'm very critical with those feedback because you can't put by and large L capital there. No, no way. Oh, yes. You can't put I ca is small after full stop. It has a spread controversy over the potential. Here in recent years, the substantial influence of part two, topic part one has sparked controversy over the potential impact of uh, this trend on topic part two. So you need to learn those uh, sentences properly in depth. Not like every time you generalize and use your own sentence. Yeah. Yes, sir. I sir, it, I... But it is, you, you can do it. Then you have intrinsically comma while it has some disadvantages. So while topic part one has a, some, so it was not disadvantages and advantages. So, so while uh, intrinsically while some people have positive views, comma others have negative opinions. That was the sentence. Yes. And then uh, next sentence also, you have started with I, which is not capital. You can't start the sentence with a small letter. Yes, sir. Can we agree that while digital media plays a significant role in library, comma, and then you have said, you have written library instead of comma, you have written full stop. And then again, it has a drawback. It was a compound, complex sentence by itself. Uh, yes. So those kind of errors, um, you know, they are, they are, they are, you're, you have already lost your two marks for grammar. Um, already just like it. And it, it is not debatable, it is debatable. D E B A T A B L. Spelling. Debate. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I'm just giving you a quick proofread here while others are making notes. But you need yes. to work with that. You need to make sure um, you, know, you write all those uh, template sentences properly. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Have you guys uh, finished with? Are you guys finished with this? No. Yes. Yes. Okay, so first one is the most asset, uh, you know, topics you're going to use this one by, by and large, by and large simply means it's a concluding phrase. By and large, better phrase, better words, you know, you bring better words, you get better marks, simple as that. So concluding in conclusion, uh, um, uh, you know, in conclusion or concluding here and all those are old phrases. So bring something new, actually by and large was a, is, a, is a very old phrase. But I have brought this again, you know, in, in language, this is what happens. So something which becomes uh, old fashioned, if that comes again, it becomes a new fashion again, right? Language is also more or less like that. The words which uh, people start using and they become, they appear in dictionary, you know, for example, Hindi word roti, that is now in uh, Cambridge dictionary. Everyone knows roti, Hindi word guru, that is in dictionary, right? How do those words, they get to dictionary because English, speakers and English writers, they started using them. Okay, and that's how they appeared in the dictionary. So language keeps evolving, you know, it keeps uh, uh, getting new words. So by and large it was an old phrase, I found it somewhere, I really liked it and I brought that in my essay. So I, I have I have been writing the same in my IELTS essays and everywhere, wherever I write this. Yeah. Um, I've also written essays for GAMSAT. So I've set GAMSET, uh, in GAMSET, GAMSET is a graduate uh, medical admission test uh, for if you want to study medicine in Australia. So in that also, there's one component, which is an essay. So actually there are two essays uh, in section two. Uh, there are three sections in that. First one is a humanity in which you get questions from your um, um, English, main part is English. And then second is essay. So I've written essays for GAMSET as well. I use the same thing. I always score 80 plus in, in GAMSET writing essays too. So I'm talking everything from experience. It's just not like typical PTE thing, but I'm bringing my whole experience in this template um, to give you the best. 
Okay. So by and large, from what has been discussed above, it can be stated that topic part one is not an advantage, comma, but it is a set of trade-offs between both advantages and disadvantages. So it just sentence. So what I have done, I have minimized. I have minimized what you think and write. So in this sentence, you don't think, you just learn and you write. If you have topic phrase, you can make that sentence. Just one sentence is good enough in the conclusion. Most people will fall short of time when you get to this stage. If you have a topic type in which you have discussed positive sides, you can say by and large from what has been discussed above, it can be stated that not only, uh, uh, not only, so no, it, it can be stated that not, not uh, topic part one plays a role in topic part two or noun phrase, whatever you want to write here, but it also helps in, so here you are just concising those main points which you have discussed in the paragraph one and paragraph two. Yeah, so two concise points. Basically here, th this is concluding uh, uh, part is always uh, restating your thesis statement. And that then you're done. All right, please do ask questions. We have, we are almost done with the class, um, but we can definitely, I can definitely take questions if you have. Remember, uh, as, as I discussed, there are three stages. First stage is trusting the template. Second stage is uh, learning the template. Third stage is mastering. Once you are mastering straight, you can tweak the template according to the needs of the paragraph. But uh, for example, Surinder, um, as I saw, you're, you're still learning the template, good effort. You have learned most of it, but it's not at the level of master yet because you haven't um, um, learned it uh, fully. Yes, yeah. sir, I will try it again, yes. I have a question. So is it right, the additional positive side is an optional or it's part of, of the template? Is uh, it optional to add? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, so what was that additional what? The um the paragraph two the uh, additional positive side on the paragraph two this one additional positive side you will only add there in the essay topics in which you're only discussing positive because the essay topic does not allow you to discuss negative for example okay you, yeah mm -hmm. the essay topic was only discuss the advantages of online information now in that case you can never discuss a disadvantage. So in the first body paragraph, you will discuss first advantage. And then in the second body paragraph, you will discuss another advantage. So you discuss that two advantages in different paragraphs, main, main points. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Yeah. A very valid question there. Do you have any other question? No, not for me. OK, so uh, some of you have uh, joined me. Um, some of you have joined me um, on request. So um, Yogesh, you are one of uh, them. Uh, what score are you chasing, Yogesh? Uh, I'm chasing for 65 plus. Yeah, 65 shouldn't be a big deal for you. <laughs> you need quality material and right strategies. So what are, we have realized that everyone who is teaching PTE uh, does not have understanding so uh, and don't fall prey into the things like tricks and things like that we have shortcut methods and like that learn english improve english get your desired mm -hmm. yeah yeah <clears throat> uh, i have i have only trouble in reading otherwise i, I can score very high in all, all the other three parameters yeah, so in reading if you have trouble in reading uh, you can watch my video reorder paragraph is very mm -hmm. very important and i'm going to place some uh, some classes for fill in the blanks as well. Yeah. In uh, reading uh, uh, the blank, the order paragraph, these are the two classes, these are the two topics, and they are very, very important. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have another person here. Um, okay. So, yeah, she, she's left already. Okay. Do you have any other question? Please ask, and then we'll call it today. Uh, my other question is that do you have any sample? essay which apply this so visit my facebook uh, uh, visit our um, visit our uh, uh, website which is endeavorstudy.com mm -hmm. so you i'm going to actually show you guys mm -hmm. and then you can make um, 
guest login and from there you can see some of those essays too. So I'm going to show you guys, just give me one moment. I'm just trying to get out of this full screen mode. So for example, if you go, um, if you go here, and then where you will go endeavorstudy.com.au and then yeah. this is the website. From there, you will uh, you can go to guest login, mm -hmm. yeah. guest login, and then you click uh, and feed uh, some of your details here. Create guest login account. Once you are uh, um, once you have an account with that account, you can log in. So you yeah. can, all our existing students they go from this um, link and then they click here, and then uh, sometimes you know we have set. You know, there is not going to have to double click it, and then inside of this, you will go to PTE, and then in PTE, you will go to say, so for example, you were talking of reading, okay? Oh, okay. Yogesh, for reading, yeah. we have a good paragraph, like we have like 200, 300 questions there. Fill in the blanks, we have 300 questions there. Fill in the blanks, reading 150. And all those questions, they come with the reasoning, not just the not just the question, but all these questions, they also have reasoning why particular um, response is correct and why particular is not correct. Oh, okay. Oh. Similarly, in listening, so what were we talking about? Essays, so some uh, write essays. So in write essays, we have the topics, so we will have topics here, and then you will write the essay within the time, and then mm -hmm. we also have the model answer. Right. So yeah. All those answers have been written with the help of, for example, if you go to um, essay number 14, so if you go to essay number 14, so this is one of the topic which is um, you know, asked very frequently. So I have that so written here as well, and mm -hmm. we have uh, written it with the help of the template. So you, you know you can figure out how the template has been used to. Uh, you know, write that particular essay. Yeah. Okay. Similarly, for showing through, yeah. Yeah. Similarly, in listening module, we have a write from dictation. So we have a 500 plus write from dictation. We have summarized spoken text, listening, fill in the blanks, highlight. So you have got everything which you can practice here. Then once you have done that, then we will test you through mock test and we see that you're performing in mock test and then you go and do the exam. So when you come to organized coaching, so we have a proper way of doing everything one after another. So that we make sure that uh, what happens, yes, people can prepare. If your English level is good, you can prepare by yourself, but just knowing everything and inside out, every topic type, there are 20 topics. Uh, uh, it's too much uh, uh, to grab from different resources. And then a lot of information which is available on uh, free resources, you can't even trust it. Um, so, yeah. yeah. But it's always there. All right, guys, probably um, you have, uh -huh. Uh, we we had a good run so far. Uh, if you have any questions, um, we can ask questions. So what I'm going to place, I'm going to place some class for just for proofreading because uh, some of you may have uh, uh, some few things to um, proofread or your, some of your essays to proofread. So we can just proofread essays for everyone, not only just one person or another, so that everyone can learn at the same time and ask questions. So I'll place uh, some of that class uh, in near future especially for our enrolled students so that um, you can get proofreading for uh, all of your essays. And uh, for the people who are watching us uh, live on uh, uh, YouTube, uh, unfortunately, I didn't advertise it on YouTube today, uh, but uh, I actually wanted to go live on Facebook, but due to technical hitch, I was unable to throw this video live on Facebook, but uh, this video was then later on, I put live on YouTube. So any of your friends, um, you know, feel free to uh, share with them. Um, you just have to subscribe to our channel, uh, Endeavor PTE Study Center. Uh, we have the same channel or same uh, name for our uh, Facebook page as well, <clears throat> Endeavor PTE Study Center. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a nice yes, week. Any other question? Any last question? Um, I have a question, Mohinder. Is it possible to send you a sample essay? Oh yeah, do you want me yeah. to uh, bring uh, write, uh, read one sample essay? Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm just going to email to you. 
and then yeah i can just log in yes. if you have written an essay definitely send it to my email so what i'm going mm -hmm. to do when i place this uh, uh this uh, proofreading class uh, probably i can place one in next week uh, make sure you attend that class and we will do the i'll do the proofreading for all the written work uh, so we do proofreading for everyone's work in those uh, one and a half and two hours so that all your essays maybe your summaries summarize for context we can proofread as much as i can okay thank okay. you because what i have what happens if i have to proofread if i proofread your essay and if you are not in front of me there are certain things i can't just uh, you know just type it takes me long time to type and then still the information does not get to your head so i can straight away we can discuss and i can correct your essays too yep mind i yeah. use yes yeah I also have a question, but it is not related to the essays. I think ah, I have, problems. yeah, problem with uh, oral fluency and uh, pronunciation. How can I uh, improve that? So, so first of all, pronunciation, pronunciation. That's not pronunciation. Uh, look, um, it is the last thing uh, we can uh, do. Uh, look, you are looking for sixty-five plus score. As long as your pronunciation is forty or forty-five, you, it you should be good enough. Uh, to go for your uh, 65 but you have to improve your content and you have to improve your oral fluency oral fluency can be improved with the help of templates in your uh, reader lecture and in your uh, describe image okay so again you if you already know what you would be speaking then you would be fluent but if you are thinking and speaking then you are not going to be fluent yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, this is how PSN treats oral fluency. So yeah, we can't uh, pro uh, we can't change the PSN system, but we can definitely change our approach uh, to it. So um, you know, I would recommend you if you just want access to our classes and templates and things, I would recommend you to formally enroll in the course. Um, I mean, we have sixty percent off, so it's not like I'm asking for thousands. Of so I can give you easily six weeks course just in $200, you'll get access to all our material and all our resources. So that when you go and do uh, sit in the exam, you feel comfortable and you know everything. Inside. I know I am Pradeep. Oh yeah, Pradeep, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yes, Pradeep, you are here, yeah. So with oral fluency and, uh, um, uh, sorry Pradeep, um, I thought uh, it was uh, a different person, but uh, uh, with your um, oral fluency, uh, Pradeep, you have to work with your describe image, your read a lecture, as well as your uh, uh, read aloud. So you have that uh, uh, unnatural drawl. For example, PT live class, starting soon, writing module, write essay. So this is like typical, your way of speaking that is writing down your score. So you should speak something, PT live class, starting soon, writing module, write essay. Endeavor study center, PTE, IELTS, NATI, Call zero four five five nine zero three five two one. All PT courses at sixty percent off. So what I have seen. So if you do another mock test, I can figure out. Um, so have you improved on that or not from your previous attempt? Ah. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. Like when we do the mock test, can we access only for the uh, like reading uh, section or not? I was allocated, but it was only a full mock test. I'm just wondering. I have been, I've been only, I have already, uh, I have only allocated you full mock test because I want to see your performance as a whole. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see your performance as a whole. All right. Because right. your speaking is not that bad. So your speaking is bad, but how much influence your speaking is having on your reading that, that needs to be seen. All right. Right. So then I will, uh, you do that and then uh, after that if there's any problem we can uh... we can definitely discuss yeah yeah okay thank you uh, sir i have a question like i have sent you an essay essay yep so so you told me that it's not a good templates i didn't understand so how can i improve that one so come to the read uh, whenever i'm going to plus uh, put this class uh, which is going to be proofreading so basically, uh, uh, read your essay and read your template. So you see that where you haven't written the full sentences from the template. Compare and then come to the proofreading class and we can discuss. Yes, sir. Sir, in the paragraph one, I didn't uh, understand the thesis statement. So that's why I didn't uh, combine third and fourth sentence in that. 
we can discuss in detail in um, in the proofreading class yes sir okay yes sir so it seems that you haven't made full notes of the essay either so it seems that you may not have full essay template you when you made notes of that essay template you didn't write some of those sentences they were not complete as if they were so we can discuss that in a proofreading class in detail yes sir okay yes sir lossia are Thank you, you yes jack how are you going jack jack are you all right yep jack jack is not here so i hope uh, this helped the guys i want you to um uh, work hard and uh, um you know if you have any questions we can definitely discuss discuss them in the next class beginning of the next class all right okay Good. okay thank you no see you all right yeah uh just one small question please <laughs> yeah um yeah i just want to know that um apart from the the template we can also do other options like write the essay on our own words in your own words you definitely can write in your own words but i don't guarantee whether yeah. you want to address all the scoring criteria or not oh i see okay it's all about addressing the scoring criteria yeah Okay. So you can That's... mix and match though. You can use some parts from here, but you can mm -hmm. also write something from yourself as long as that makes sense. We know because we want to get you to the desired uh, result in the shortest possible way and easiest possible way. Okay. So we have defined a way for that. Yeah. So if you stick to that way, um you can be someone like uh, Amin who would be getting the score in first attempt like that. Mm -hmm. um and obviously whatever we teach here is not academically incorrect so um if you follow whatever we say um you know definitely it will help you but if you want yeah. to use that a template with the care and there i would have no problems yeah all right okay if i see the essay is only 13 or 12 marks out of 90 score so even if you get half of that by writing anything from your side that's mm -hmm. more than enough for you yeah. to get 65 each but we don't want half we want all of them yeah we want all of them obviously need to trust on something which has been proven before all right okay thank you good luck guys i'll see you guys soon uh, in next class thank you okay thank okay. you okay thank you